Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to another Ignition Community Meeting. Uh, glad to see everybody here. Um, today, we our like broad theme uh, is uh, integration between ROS2 and Ignition. We have two invited guests uh, talking about their projects uh, that are using Ignition with ROS2. Um, they are ready here, I see. So we're ready to get started. Um, as usual, before we get into the presentations, uh, I'll just go over some announcements. And I'd like to remind everyone that if you want to discuss some something in the meeting, if we have time at the end, uh, feel free to add items to the agenda here at the bottom of the document. So without further ado, uh, let's go over the quick announcements that we have here. Um, the first one is that Ross World is back. Um, so if people are not following, Ross Con was supposed to be uh, in person this year again, but um, because of the virus and the pandemic, it didn't happen. So we're going to have Ross World again, which is a virtual event uh, that is available for everybody to join all around the world like we did last year. Um, so, you know, I know that a lot of people here are not in the US and maybe would not have been able to come to Roscon. So I hope you guys are able to join Ross World this year. Uh, so be sure to, to keep your eyes open for that. Um, I just wanted to quickly remind everybody of the Fortress release timeline. Um, so we are two weeks away from the feature freeze, which is uh, on the 7th, uh, and that itself is going to last two weeks. And the other thing that I wanted to remind people is that uh, the next community meeting, so one month from now, uh, we are going to be doing a presentation about everything that we developed at Open Robotics um, since the last release, since the edifice release. Uh, so we're going to be doing various demos of all of the features. So we're preparing a cool uh, community meeting for you guys next month. So be sure to, to join us as well. Um, and that's it that I had for announcements. There is a lot of cool stuff down here uh, in the news that I'm gonna go over uh, after the presentations too, but you know, I know people are here for the presentation, so let's just get started. Um, where I have two invited guests, Vatan and Jasmeet. I hope you're, I'm saying both your names right. Sorry if I, if I didn't. Um, so we can start with Vatan talking about uh, mobile manipulators with MoveIt2. Uh, Vatan, I, you can share your screen whenever you're ready. Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks a lot, um, Luis. And um, before I start, I, I would like to thank for um, giving me the opportunity to present our work here. Um, it's really good to do something with Ignition. And um, yeah, I'm pretty happy so far. So um, welcome to my presentation on mobile manipulators with Moe 2 and Ignition Gazebo. Uh, this is a joint effort between Picnic Robotics and Hello Robot, and um, I have uh, Benit here with me. So Benit, feel free to chime in with the um, Hello Robot introduction in the first place. Uh, I'm Watan. I'm from Turkey. I work at Picnic Robotics, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, the outline of the presentation will be as follows. So I'll be giving a brief introduction of the our mobile map manipulator of Hello Robot stretch over an overview and the sensors and then simulating the stretch um, our struggles it will be just an honest uh, presentation of what we have struggled what we have find and um, what we did and I, I I can even like hear some comments from Luis so this is better this is not maybe in the presentation and uh, integrating stretch with Moodle 2 and Ignition Gazebo and mobile based planning in Moodle. And then some virtual demos. So I'll start by introducing Stretch, um, which is a brilliant robot um, developed by Hello Robot Team, which has a differential drive base with uh, two wheels and one caster wheel. And it has a lift for translating the arm in Z axis. It has a four stage less comical arm. Tons of sensors. It has a moving head and also a compliant gripper, which is my favorite. Um, so here's a like quick video of stretch in action. Hope you see it um, fluently. So like this is a robot. It has a differential drive base. The problem with this robot is not the problem, but the challenge rather with the robot is uh, the arm cannot move laterally. So you have to plan with the base in mind. So if you go 
like want the arm to move lateral, um, you would like to plan with the base as well. So you would like to move the robot and then move the arm to get it. So um, it's a real nice robot um, that has a compliant grabber, bunch of uh, gripper, bunch of tools, a really nice telescopic arm, and really helpful in uh, research tasks and also maybe home tasks. Um, right. So I'd like to just feature this compliant gripper. Um, we have not like fully simulated the gripper yet in Ignition, but we plan to like make it look alike or feel alike, um, like this one. So this compliant gripper can literally, I think, grip anything. Um, it's pretty neat. Um, it retracts itself when like a force is applied, so it can like basically grab most of the things that. Uh, you can see in your room. And um, so as I said before, so we are planning to like make it like like this in Ignition Gazebo, hopefully. We have a few plans in mind, but uh, it's still like modeled as a normal gripper right now. But uh, in the future, um, we plan to add this functionality hopefully as well. There are a bunch of sensors. Um, I'm talking about sensors because we also need to simulate sensors to simulate a robot as well. So we have a, a real sense D435i and a microphone array, a stereo audio output. In the base, we have a LiDAR, basically a 2D LiDAR 360, and a 90 degrees of freedom inertial measurement unit, IMU, and a wrist accelerometer readoff, and force sensing in all uh, arm and lift motors, and a bunch of oil codecs. So, uh, Benito, do you have anything you'd like to add, or? No, uh, I think you've covered it pretty thoroughly. OK, that's great. So um, I'll try to walk through um, simulating Stretch with some source code examples. Hopefully, um, I did everything correct. But uh, if there's like something, there's a better way to do that, just feel free to chime in and say, oh, here, here's this. And uh, maybe we can also get help from. Uh, so, so here are a few things that took me a bit to be aware. So one thing that took me at least a week to be aware of is you can still use Zacros and URDFs. Uh, I see like a lot of like um, robots. Uh, I was like like seeing Dolly Lewis's robot at first when I started with Ignition. And it, it's an SDF based robot. And I, I thought like I could only use SDF, but you can only you can also use Zacros as well. Zacros and URDFs work as same with the gazebo as well. So you can still use the gazebo tags, sensor, um, like the other like gazebo tags as well. Um, you might need to add some system plugins to your role file, for example. Let me show you my screen real quick. So for example, to your world file, you can, you might need to add some sensor systems like that. If it is visible, I can make it a little bit bigger. Is it visible? No. Yeah. So like you might need to add some sensor plugins to get it working, as well as the sensor itself to the Zacro file. So magnetometer, IMU, maybe this is for LiDAR, and uh, contact is also important. So there are a bunch of system plugins that might, you might need to add as well while simulating something. And continuing with my things, joint trajectory plugin is awesome. I, I didn't know that before. It is great. It's working great. Um, I'm like, super happy. Um, kudos to Andre, I suppose, for Jim Jupiter plugin. Uh, and uh, it's great, but um, so we don't have the Rasu control integration yet, but I think it's a work in progress from Alejandros. I saw in OpenPR on that. Um, before Rasu control is ready with, to use with Ignition, I think um, we need to use joint trajectories and joint states. Um, but um, once the Rasu control is ready, I think you might like, migrate to that roster control. Um, so 
Spawn on a ro robot is super, super easy via a robot description topic. I don't know why I didn't thought that before, but like I saw the topic, I, I was like, why am I going to use topic? And then I saw an example using it, and then it was great. And you just like define the robot description as like we regularly do like that robot description and now and the robot state publisher which publishes the robot description topic which is the the issue the regular way of declaring the robot state and now you can just uh sorry you can just like spawn like that so you can just like subscribe to the robot description topic and then it has a lot of benefits I think like it also means that you can even change a robot description topic dynamically, and then it will show it in addition as well, which is a great thing. I didn't try it yet, but I suppose it will work because it's sub subscribing topic. Anyway. So uh, that is something really nice that I super super like about the addition in Rust too. Um, so one a little bit frustration of me is bridge. Um, Bridge is nice, but um, it can be a bit long if you have lots of sensors and lots of topics. I don't know if there is a like bridge command that like like shares everything in between. But uh, so uh, what I did was a bit long. So there is a bridge, and like all the like sensors or like data that I would like to share between ignition and ROS to. For example, command velocity, joint trajectory, photometry, the TF, clock, joint states, um, LIDAR, IMU, magnetometer, accelerometer, real sense, and there's a bunch of remapping as well um, to fix the topics, and also a bunch of TF transformations. Um, so I, it, it's a bit long. I don't think it's hard, but it's a bit long looking in the launch file. Um, but I don't know if there's a better way, to be honest. Um, if there is, please say. <laughs> uh, so that's that's how I uh, how like we start using bridge and like sharing data between addition and ROS2. So that is like bridge is basically the connection between ROS2 and addition. It works super fast, uh, super stable. I suppose I didn't have any problems with the bridge itself. Um, so I'm super happy with it. Except for the um, this um, long bridge node, but I think that's okay. And um, so porting existing world is super super easy in it to ignition. So like if you have a gazebo world like staying somewhere, you can just like convert it pretty quick because they both use STFs and um, maybe just a few little inertia adjustments. But I think like like pretty much like everything like initially works. So like I know the, uh, so for stretch, we use the AWS Robomaker Small House World, which is a great, great world um, that is done with the decent folks at AWS. And uh, like the, the world is looking great. And uh, I, I remember using it in Gazebo and then like porting it is just like changing like two or three inertias um, that Ignition was not super happy about, but that was pretty much it. So like, literally like took me more, like less than five minutes to port this existing world to uh, working in Ignition. And uh, now we have a robot in that world. So simulating stretch sensors. So sensors, I think are so great in Ignition. So most of the sensors are ported. I think like there's a good, Feature parity, I suppose, in uh, between ignition and like the Gazebo Classic, and um, I didn't have like much troubles with like the sensors that we use on Stretch. Um, you can like literally use the Gazebo and sensor tags, like in um, so for example, I really like to do an ignition plugin Zacro, and put everything related with ignition to that Zacro, and uh, for example. For IMU, it is just the good old IMU sensor plugin. So, like, literally, you can just copy and paste from the ROS1 code to this, and it will work. So, like, 
regular sensor, always on update rate, visualize, like everything to me works um, pretty much um, like equal with Gazebo Classic. I didn't have any trouble like porting these sensors to Ignition um, Gazebo. Um, LiDAR works great. So I was amazed at how fast LiDAR was. Maybe that's because I used the GQ, but it's pretty fast. I'm pretty happy with the, especially with the LiDAR performance. And uh, yeah, this is the drone trajectory controller. This is the diff drive. This is the state publisher. So for example, if you need an arm and you'd like to control the joints, you would need, currently at least, you would need the joint trajectory controller, which controls the joint trajectories, uh, joints via a joint trajectory controller. So you give the joint name, you give a bunch of like PID values, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And this is the, I suppose, the effort, maximum effort that um, the joint can um, put. The gains are a bit big, I know, but uh, that's what we found really. And uh, yeah, joint state is also like useful. I will like go on this joint states a bit in Moot as well. Moot will want to publish joint trajectories and will want to subscribe to joint states. So it, 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 would, it would like request you, request joint states from Ignition, and it will publish joint trajectories. That's how we connect Moot and uh, Ignition Gazebo. And uh, diff drive is like the regular diff drive, nothing fancy, it works as is, no problems. Automatically, I found is pretty good, I think. Automatically was decent. Um, and yeah, sensors are basically that. So um, one problem, maybe slight problem with the sensor is custom plugins are not supported yet as the best of my knowledge. Um, so if you want to support a different sensor or different type of sensor that is not existent in Ignition Gazebo, you might need to source build add the sensor, or you might get to, you might get uh, a little bit creative. So for real sense, what we did was like basically throwing a bunch of depth cameras, a bunch of like optical cameras, RGB cameras, RGBD cameras. Like basically, what that is what real sense is. But like instead of like writing a custom plugin, I just like throw in a few um, depth cameras, RGB cameras that is existing on uh, RealSense through my Zacco file that I showed you. So RealSense is, so IMU is here, the RealSense IMU. The RGBD camera is here. And um, there is the color topics just represented as regular RGB cameras. So um, that's uh, as easy as it gets, I think. Um, like you can just like use this kind of thing if you want to simulate real sense, or like if you get a little bit creative, I don't think you would need custom plugins um, for all of the things. But uh, or I I think like adding a sensor to ignition gazebo is not so hard. It's almost like copying over the others from the other sensors and then. Uh, just changing the data that you would like to produce. Uh, so I think that's pretty um, trivial-ish as well. So if you want to add a new sensor, I think Open Robotics Team will appreciate your contribution. <laughs> uh, wow, you have custom sensors. By the way, like, feel free to like, chime in and uh, if you have something. Yeah, so from Fortress, we, we have support for custom sensors in a less well, hacky way, in a, in a native way. So when you migrate to the next uh, distribution, you, you have access to that. Ooh, sweet. So one more reason to go to Fortress. Uh, so um, by the way, we are currently using a binary release of Edifice. I think that is one of the earlier releases that we use. I use 5.0, uh, which might be a little old now, but um, um, like binary does a job for this project, for all these sensors. So, um, so integrating Stretch and Moe2 with Ignition. 
So what we did is we first integrated Moment 2 and Stretch in Arvis using the fake um, hardware uh, features of Moment. Um, it is just the good old regular process of integrating a robot with Moment. You basically use the Moment Setup Assistant, which is a UI-based tool that makes um, make like generates all the launch and config files that you would need your robot to use with Moet. But MSA is not ported yet to ROS2. So we use the regular MS MSA with ROS1 and then like manually edit uh, the files to be compatible with ROS2. What we did for that project. But we are in the works to port MSA pretty soon um, to ROS2 as well. Um, yeah, the main reason it is not ported yet is because like the launch files are pretty different than what it is in ROS1, so XML versus Python. And um, so it's, uh, we are still like working on a like neat way to like, make the, uh, like, these launch files looking good. And uh, Moetia and Ignition Gazebo was um, more painless than I think so for the context. So I did the stretch robot and also I did not publish it yet, but it took me around like two to three hours to integrate a UR5 from scratch to Ignition Gazebo and And uh, so it's like pretty pain painless if you know what you're doing. And um, I think it's good. So move it to an ignition talks through follow joint trajectory action um, that publishes joint trajectories until IGN ROS2 control arrives. So once this arrives, we will not need an action server that needs to publish action because ROS2 control will be like opening a server itself. And we just subscribe to joint states via the joint state system plugin. Um, the joint trajectories are published with our custom action or stretch ignition control, which is really a like like 50 lines of Python code just uh, just publishes like opens up a action server for joint trajectory action server and then publishes joint trajectories and for stretch in specific it also publish the command velocities for the diff drive because here we have a mobile base and an R. If you only have an R, you would only need the joint trajectories. You would need the command velocities or the multi dot trajectory action. But as we use a mobile base and ARM together, we would need to publish command velocities and the joint trajectories. The command velocities are received by the diff drive plugin in Ignition Gazebo. Joint trajectories are received by the joint trajectory plugin. Um, both of them works quite nice. If you publish something to them, um, basically. Um, so it is also pretty easy to test this as well. So you don't even need to need move it to test if your robot can work in ignition. You can just like IGN topic, publish the thing, and then it will work. So that's that's one thing I really like about ignition. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for integrating stretch and move it to. Mission. And in the last part, I have integrated the mobile based planning in Moet 2. So, mobile based planning existed in Moet for a long time. That is a rather unknown feature of Moet. So, people were using um, quadcopters or holonomic bases um, with Moet to like generate feasible plans for. The project ways to avoid collisions and stuff. So it is more popular on quadcopters because there was like there are some options now, but like maybe three, four years ago there was no like almost no options to use with quadcopters. And uh, people were like using it at some point. But it is a rather unknown feature. So this is possible through virtual joints. What we call, and uh, so virtual joints were existed before, 
but now we added a diff drive functionality to just diff joints because diff joints like to uh, uh, virtual joints were considered holonomic, so they could go in the y direction, x direction, like um, in any way. But um, now we added a diff drive functionality to this virtual joint that is basically defined like that as is all the joints defined in SRDF. It is just a virtual joint, position joint, the parent frame is the ORAM and child frame is the phase link. And um, we just specify the motion model as diff drive. It's, if you specify it's holonomic, you can just like drive the holonomic robot as well, or a quadcopter as well, you can plan for this stuff. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it to how we um, added the functionality. But this is how our SRDF looks look like. SRDF is basically a file for MUIT2, which is um, which you define groups of joints and um, their initial values, and um, yeah, and uh, some um, predefined um, roles for the joints. So I'm. I think I'm running out of time. I'll move on with a few demos real quick. Uh, so let me show you the AWS world. If it opens, yeah. So this is the world that we use for Scratch. There's a bunch of real cool stuff here. We didn't like make that world. That world is already available through AWS Global Makers School Files rule in GitHub. And we just ported it to Ignition via changing two lines of code. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it works great. Um, we hadn't had any problems. And we can just uh, like move the robot in any direction through a git drive. Uh, robot. And yeah. I'll and um, I'll show you a few more demos as well, quick demos that you usually see in the more tutorials. So we just have two launch files. One launches the ignition, one launches the Aries. We combine them together. It's easier to debug this way. <laughs> so, yeah. So here you see a real sense working. You can see the topic is published through ROS, and we can see the everything in RWIS as we usually do in ROS. Um, we can just select our planning group, for example, switch arm. I can just send a goal state, and then I can say plan and execute, and then the robot will do the same, for example. Uh, and we also have this um, position um, functionality that I have been thinking about. So I can just like plan for the robot like that, and the robot will go to that position in addition. Also, I can plan for both the robot and the arm. For example, I can do that. And then we can just like plan together with the arm and the drive as well. So, um, so this is how um, stretches, I think, like becomes really strong. So, if you can plan for the drive and the arm together, you can do lots of things with stretch because so. You will have a lateral movement. You have a pre-extendable arm. You have a nice compliant gripper that can draw around. I think um, Hello Robot is also working on a free of gripper that will allow you to on pitch as well, um, as well as the yaw axis. And we have a lift that is pretty long. And I can plan and execute, and then the robot will plan and execute as well in ignition. 
and um, it will move together. That's pretty much it. Uh, thanks a ton for listening to me. I can have any questions that you have. Hopefully, everyone like that. The code is available open source um, and currently in Picnic Fork, but it will be upstream to Hello Robot Fork, the original fork, original repository, um, hopefully soon. That was great. Thank you, Vatan, for, for the presentation. Um, does anyone have questions for Vatan before we go to the next presentation? Oh, Carlos has a hand raised. Yeah, Carlos. Uh, yeah, um, well, that, this is a fantastic uh, integration, so thanks a lot for the presentation. Um, it, it's mainly a curiosity, uh, not, not directly related to the simulation, but uh, how do you come up with those games for the PID? for the PIDs in the joints to you. I mean, this is because I, I have to do that on myself many times and I still don't have like a good answer for that. Do, do you use the, is the assistant uh, helping you on that end or do you use like a third party tool? It's all done by hand, like do you have any? Kids? That's a great question. For the real robot or simulation? Um, okay. For simulation, this is typically what I do it, but uh, okay. I don't know if you yeah. use different tools. Yeah, for simulation, I usually like pop up a pod juggler and see what I command as a topic, publish what I command as a topic, and what the robot does as a topic, and try to see the PID curve and uh, see how it changes, and usually edit by hand, which is not the most um, elegant solution. Uh, but I use a the, the pod juggler to see like if my PID gains are reasonable and the robot is like giving reasonable reactions to what I what I command it to. Um, but normally you can of course use MATLAB to model, I think, uh, the control gains, um, just like doing a mathematical model. And I believe it is it should be much easier to do some system identification through simulation and then find the gains through that system identification. Possibly, again, in MATLAB or some Python control tool. Um, but for that particular project, what I, how I found was just like pop up a plot juggler, publish what I command to robot, publish what the robot does, and then try to like adjust the gains. Uh, possibly, you can do it via slider so that it is much easier to publish the gains maybe some dynamic parameterization. I didn't do that particularly for stretch, but I think that may be a better way to do that. Awesome, thanks a lot. Yeah, no worries. Any other questions? I have one. Um, did you have any to deal with any QoS settings and, and issues related to that using the ROS ignition bridge because you're dealing with commands and with sensor data and they typically would have different QoS settings, but we don't really have a good support for that in the bridge. The QR codes? Uh, the QoS settings on, on ROS2, like if it's a best effort publisher. Oh, it, yeah. oh I see. Um, initially, I was using like all like default and um, I had like only there's some problem when I use uh, the real sense. Um, so because the real sense publishes 1920 to 180, so basically 180 pixels of RGB depth camera data, which is huge. It slows down the simulation around to 50 to 60 RTF, real time factor to me. And um, so I like basically decrease the pixels, like these, these like decrease the resolution of RGBD camera. That's how I solved it. But uh, um, I didn't play with the, the current settings in the last two. Everything was fine with default settings. Yeah, using default across all of them. Yeah. Yeah. That sense. Well, thank you. Any other questions? OK, thank you, Vatan. Another round of applause. Um, and let's welcome our second speaker today, uh, Jasmeet. I hope I'm saying your name right. 
Uh, thank you for joining us today. Jim, Jasmine is going to be talking about uh, implementing a differential drive navigation uh, robot with Nav2 and simulating it in Ignition. So the floor is yours. Jasmine, feel free to share your screen. Yeah, uh, thank you. So uh, I'll just share my screen. Yeah. So uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jasmeet Singh, and uh, I am currently a student and also working as an intern in Techno Yantra. So uh, we also have my mentor and our founder present in the meeting. So uh, Pratik, would you like to introduce yourself and the company? Hi, hi everyone. So I'm Pratik Nagas. I'm a robotics engineer and uh, we have a company called Techno Yantra. So we are a robotics based consultancy company and we work with our clients depending on their needs to develop custom software for their robots. And we use ROS heavily. So I've been working with ROS almost for five, six years now. So yeah, so and uh, we also have, so on the side, we also have some internal R&D going on. So this project, so like we are, we love to like, uh, be ready with any new technology that comes up and try to get to learn that and try to get ourselves acquainted with it as soon as possible. So this project also with Ignition Gazebo, we started, we already had a Navstack, uh, ROS2 Navstack, but we wanted to have that uh, implemented and simulated in Ignition rather than using the classic Gazebo. So that's how we started it. And we had a lot of learnings from it. And since the, this was something we were doing for learning, so we have uh, it open source so you guys can contribute and learn it as well. We also have a, a couple of other uh, research projects what we are doing, which we also have open source. One is like an R ROS RD pilot bridge. Uh, and another one is also we are working on uh, uh, Unity and uh, VR integration with uh, ROS. So yeah, we have a few interesting things going on. So hopefully we'll share some more in future. Yeah, just we can yeah, take over now. Yeah, so uh, hello, everyone. Today, I'll be presenting the project that uh, that was one of my first projects as the intern. So this project mainly resides on four main pillars, which are ROS2 Foxy, Ignition Gazebo Edifies, and SLAM Toolbox for uh, implementing SLAM, and Navigation 2 for autonomous navigation. So uh, the aim of the project was uh, to get familiar with all the new technologies like ROS2 and Ignition Gazebo. And the idea was to migrate an existing project that used the predecessor of all these technologies. So we had, we already had a project which used, uh, which was based on the IGT, uh, the differential drive bot, which used ROS1 classic Gazebo and the ROS navigation stack. So the idea was to migrate that project to use all the new technologies that were available and get familiar with them in the process. So the one of the major steps, the main steps that were involved in the migration was the first was to migrating the SDFs from classic Gazebo to making them ignition compatible. So like uh, Vetan also said that uh, the major part of the world files and the model SDFs are directly compatible with ignition, but uh, there are some things that have to be changed like the plugin names and the materials and some uh, and uh, some plugins have to be added because like ignition is highly uh, modular and everything can be uh, including the gy can be loaded using the plugins the second thing was uh, since the project was based on ros2 we had to bridge the ignition topics with the ros topics using the ros ignition bridge so that uh, we can make use of the mapping and navigation yeah, and now I'll be discussing all these uh, steps uh, a little bit in detail. So yeah, first uh, was my, so during the migration of the SDS, the first step. Uh, so like in any project, uh, in any simulation, in uh, any robotics sim uh, simulation project, we need a world to simulate the to get a simulation environment. So for that, uh, we already had a world file from the classic Gazebo, which we needed to load in Ignition Gazebo. So, uh, but the the classic Gazebo, the original world file used Ogre material scripts for text for describing the textures and plane colors, and those scripts were loaded uh, using the script tags in the 
visual component of the link. But uh, since Ignition Gazebo is highly modular and it can be used with many different uh, rendering engines with the help of the Ignition Rendering Library. So it does not support the material scripts and the script tags. So uh, instead of that, uh, so for, for example, in classic Gazebo, we uh, the default uh, gazebo.material file contains this material which describes the plain color green and we can simply load that plain color in uh, using the script tags uh, inside the material and so but this won't work in ignition so we had to change it to directly define the color inside the material tag using the ambient diffuse and specular tags and similarly uh, we can also describe uh, textures so uh, this shows uh, the wood texture in the gazebo.material file and how it is described uh, using the Ogre material script and how it can be uh, loaded in the SDF. And this is how we can uh, load the similar same material inside uh, Ignition Gazebo. So we can use the PBR tag, which is uh, with, uh, through which we can load that texture as the albedo map. And the PBR tag, uh, has two major workflows. The one is the metal, and the other is the specular workflow. And they also uh, the metal uh, tags provide many other tags like albedo, uh, roughness map, and uh, light map, and etc. So all these can be used to provide different maps to get the final texture that you want. And uh, now the second major step uh, in migrating the SDFs was the robot description. So uh, in, uh, I realized that later in the project that uh, we can also use uh, the URDF and Jacro, uh, but but uh, till that time we just decided to stick with using the SDFs and experiment with what are the possibilities. So uh, so like in classic Gazebo, generally the URDF files are used for robot description, and one of the major benefits of URDF is that it can be generated from Jacro files. And the Jacro files are very readable and allow the reuse reusability of code. So uh, that's a very uh, major benefit of UIDF. So in Ignition Gazebo, we experimented with using the STF file for the robot description. So we used the existing UIDF and converted it to the to SDF using the Ignition SDF command. And uh, the materials were changed according to the migration steps which are mentioned before. And this, uh, we found this tool, uh, Jacro for SDF, which allows you to create a file uh, with the extension X macro, which uh, allows you to create, define uh, properties and macros just like Jacro for, but for SDF. And you can easily convert and create an SDF from this. So we used the, use this uh, tool to create the SDF files. And so uh, here's an example, like in cl uh, classic Gazebo, we can define a property named body color and give it the value from the material script uh, to as the silver. And we can directly use that property inside the material tag. But, and in Ignition Gazebo, uh, for, the, for Ignition Gazebo, inside the robot description SDF, we defined a macro uh, with the ambient diffuse and specular uh, definitions for the silver color and then use that macro as the uh, color for, for the link, for the particular link. And uh, the second thing was the changing of, was the addition of some plugins and the changing of the plugin names. So uh, of, in the classic Gazebo, the name of the plugin is different, the differential type plugin is different. And uh, in the bottom, you can see that the differential type plugin that was loaded in Ignition Gazebo was added directly to the SDF of the robot. And the joint state publisher was also, uh, the joint state publisher plugin was also added uh, in the SDF of the robot. And uh, the third step was uh, defining the uh, GUI of the, of the Ignition Gazebo. So uh, Ignition Gazebo is like, it's very, um, very modular and it, can, it allows you to load the features uh, like the component uh, inspector, entity tree, and etc. And all those can be loaded as plugins. And by default, uh, the default GUI config is stored in in the in the home directory in this uh, in, in this part. So we created our own uh, GUI config, which also loaded some other uh, GUI uh, GUI plugins like the image display to display the camera data for the color camera and the depth camera. 
and we uh, we included that in our package and we when we launch the our ignition gazebo world it launches with this gui template and uh, the the last thing in migrating the sds so sds use the path uh, the relatives path which are defined using the environment variables and in gazebo uh, those environment variables uh, include gazebo model path gazebo resource path and gazebo plugin path so the uh, the model path and uh, the resource path they both define the models uh, and the worlds world files and the plugin path is for the path of the plugins and in ignition gazebo there is the ignition gazebo resource path and the gui plugin and system plugin path so we uh, use these environment variables and created environment hooks that uh, can uh, set these environment variables as soon as we source the workspace of the project and uh, the model and the sdf can find the models using uh, the relative paths and now the second major step was the bridging cross to and ignition so uh, like ignition gazebo is uh, also uses a similar uh, pub uh, publish and subscribe mechanism to ross and it contains ignition topics so if you want to use ROS2 with Ignition Gazebo, these topics have to be bridged with ROS2 so that uh, the messages can be relayed between uh, both the environments. So, uh, and for that, we can use the ROS Ignition Bridge package and the parameter bridge node to bridge a particular topic through. Uh, and uh, for that, we have to specify the topic and the message type in ROS and the message type uh, in Ignition. So here's a quick example. So consider a situation where we want to control the bot using the teleop node in Ignition. So the teleop node publishes uh, twist commands on the command velocity topic. And we have to provide that messages from ROS to Ignition gazebo command velocity topic so that the bot can move in the, uh, in the Ignition gazebo simulator. So uh, we have the Ignition gazebo deep drive plugin. Which, uh, which subscribes to the command velocity topic and it has the type of ignition.messages.twist. And in ROS2, we have the teleop twist keyboard which publishes command velocity topic on the geometry messages, uh, which is of the type of the geometry messages message twist. So the ROS ignition bridge uh, acts as the bridge between those two topics and so uh, allows us to use the teleop twist key, uh, package with the ignition gazebo simulator we uh, we can have the same topic names or we can also use remapping to have different topic names uh, on both sides uh, so yeah and uh, so some of the bridges that we use in our project uh, were like the command velocity bridge the lidar bridge for bridging the laser scan messages from ignition to cross and the odometry bridge to get the odometry data from ignition and provide it to ROS, and uh, the joint state bridge which provides the joint states uh, from ignition and publishes it to the joint states topic in ROS. and then we use this uh, and all this setup was finally used for uh, map for the mapping process in uh, using slam toolbox and uh, next it was used for uh, the for, uh, for using navigation too, which makes use of all the of the data that is coming from ignition, and uh, which uh, and can, can apply autonomous navigation. So uh, I'll just uh, present a quick demo. Uh, so just a second. So uh, here uh, I'm going to launch the uh, ignition, uh, the ignition launch file, which launches the simulation world, and uh, it uh, and I'm also setting the with bridge argument to true, which uh, launches this launch file, which is the ignition bridge launch file. It defines all the uh, bridge nodes that are to be launched, which bridge all the data like the camera, the camera images, the depth images, the lidar bridge, and all these bridges are. Uh, launched using uh, this launch file. So uh, this is launched. And uh, yeah. 
So this is the simulation world, and here the disk drive bot can be seen, and uh, you can uh, you use the teleop command to uh, teleop package to move the bot as per our will, and uh, the navigation launch file is launched uh, with launches Argus and the navigation stack. So we just have to provide the initial pose of the uh, bot uh, so, so that AMCL can start its work. And uh, this initial pose can also be provided through the config file. So as soon as we uh, provide the initial pose, uh, we can see uh, the, the navigation stack is updating the cost map. And uh, I'll just enable the robot model. takes some time to load the model. Yeah, so here we can see uh, the model is uh, loaded in Argus and we can uh, provide navigation goals. Uh, so uh, we can provide navigation goals and the bot can be seen moving in the ignition world world as well as an Argus and the planned path can also be seen. Yeah. So uh, that's it uh, from my side. So uh, thank you for having me over for the presentation. If, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask and any suggestions and Nice. Thank you, Jasmeet, for, for the presentation. That was a, a, a lot of nice tips for people migrating from Gazebo Classic to Ignition and, and using uh, ROS tools together. Any questions for Jasmeet? I have one um, that, that could also be a question for Vatan. I noticed that both of you used Foxy with Edifice, uh, even though the, the officially supported version with uh, to use with Foxy is Citadel. Um, did you guys have a specific reason to use Edifice? Or maybe you can answer that just me for your project. So in my case, I began with using Citadel for the project. And uh, then later on, uh, we sh uh, shifted to Edifice because of the presence of more plugins and uh, more options uh, for using more uh, plugins, like the mechanism drive and so we want to wanted to uh, experiment with mechanism drive also. So and Citadel didn't have the mechanism drive plugin, which was uh, it was only released with Edifice. So we shifted to using Edifice. Got it. Uh, Thank so you. Yep. For me, um, Stretch works on Galactic, so um, Galactic is with Edifice, I suppose. But um, I use Edifice and Foxy as well, <laughs> relatedly. Um, the reason I use Edifice is mainly it is the latest, uh, latest version of Ignition Gazebo at that time. So I plan to migrate uh, to Fortress as I can when Fortress is released. Got it. OK, I didn't realize that the Hello Robot was using Galactic. Yeah, that makes sense to use Edifice there. Oh, any other questions? So we have five minutes to go. Quickly go over the news uh, for the past month that were curated by Cat. Let's see. I hope I'm sharing the correct window. Yep. So um, Cat curated a, a bunch of uh, gazebo related news for us here. I'm going to highlight a few of them. So Project Dave has been released the 4.0 version. This is an underwater simulation with Gazebo Classic. So if you're doing underwater, um, be sure to check that out. I, I believe it uses ROS1 uh, as well. Um, another one that I wanted to highlight is the machine learning extensions for Gazebo. This was a, a GSOC intern project that, that was finished this month here at Open Robotics. Um, so now it's possible to generate like semantic, uh, like 
uh, labeled um, Im camera images as well with uh, bounding boxes and so on. And there is a nice tool for you to generate your own data sets using Ignition. So be sure to check it out. Uh, I'll make sure that we have Amir come back to, to talk about his project uh, during one of these community meetings too, because I think a lot of people will be interested. Um, another cool thing is uh, the University of Chicago uh, had a robotics course that used Gazebo and Ross uh, during the pandemic because it's really hard to use, uh, you know, physical robots nowadays. And finally, like the DARPA Subterranean Challenge finals are happening soon and they are using Ignition uh, Dome uh, for the virtual competition. And uh, the, the prize is gonna be $750,000 uh, for, for the first place. So that's a lot of money. Uh, and you have the dates here for, for when the events will happen. So this is all running Ignition in the virtual competition. So that's very exciting. That, these are the news. Uh, be sure to check all of the other ones that all the links are very interesting. Um, so let's go to the other items in the agenda. Uh, Kanek, am I saying your name right? Do you want to um, get speak about uh, your question on the mic or should we just answer it? Um, uh, hi. Um, yeah, so my question is, uh, as you can read, so can we use um, VR with Gazebo or and and how would you compare Unity and Gazebo in terms of VR integration? Yeah. So when you say Gazebo, are you saying Gazebo Classic or Ignition Gazebo? Uh, classic and uh, Ignition. So both if you can comment on, it would be good. Sure. So I, I left some notes here because I wasn't sure if we would have time. So I can uh, read them out. So Gazebo Classic has some native support for the Oculus Rift VR headset, which at this point is kind of outdated. Uh, but I know people have used other VR sets uh, used through plugins with uh, Gazebo Classic, like I think OpenVR and some other uh, VR headsets. So you can check this out uh, for some inspiration. For Ignition Gazebo, I haven't seen anyone using VR headsets yet. Oh, there was another link there. Um, I'll be sure to open it here that Benjamin posted. Um, there you go. Uh, so this is Ros and Gazebo. I believe it, it's probably Ros1 and Gazebo Classic. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so there are some examples out there for Gazebo Classic, I'm sure. Yeah, so Benjamin uh, says yes. Uh, for Ignition Gazebo, I haven't seen anyone using VR yet. We don't have any native support yet. Um, and how it compares to Unity, I, I wouldn't be able to tell. I haven't tried uh, using VR on Unity. Maybe someone here can speak about it. Uh, I would assume that Unity has very good support for VR. Um, yeah. yeah, we so we have worked with uh, this uh, VR and uh, ROS integration. So we were exploring if we want to use Gazebo or Unity. But uh, like in VR, it's more important to have the uh, the rendering engine to be quite uh, advanced and uh, the look and feel of the environment is also quite important and so and like uh, especially for if you want to put some game elements and things like that it's much more easier to use unity and because it has like native support for vr so you can basically whatever we were simulating uh, uh, using with a ros to unity uh, there was a ros to unity demo blog post which came in i think few months ago where they had a showed a way for integrating ros with unity so we could just port that to VR as well. Uh, so Unity, I think, would be, has quite good support. Cool. Thank you for for the answer, Pratik. Um, so we're uh, running out of time here. So uh, if people still want to continue talking about VR, I recommend people open a, a topic on Gazebo Community, and then we can discuss a little bit there if there are people interested in adding support and improving the support that is already there on Gazebo. Uh, we're all ears. And I'll finish it here right on time. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. This will be uh, recorded and posted to YouTube and Vimeo later. So people who are not here, I can check it out. And thank you again to our uh, two presenters. And see you guys at the at next month. We're gonna have a bunch of demos for the Fortress release. Bye-bye. Yeah.